Greetings YouTube, see my Skyflash here again, how you doing? Today, continuing the Leather Crafter Bulbasaur. This is part two. So, what we're gonna do, we're gonna get straight into it. I'm gonna give you a recap, first of all, on the things that I have been up to. <clears throat> Last time I left it, I was just painting up the claws, left them to dry. I'm happy to say that they've come out really, really well. Just about finished them. I've got one here to finish off that I've finished and I'm going to show you here and now. There she is, or he is, <laughs> whichever way you want to look at it. <clears throat> uh, really quite proud of that, I think. Uh, I have, uh, obviously, yeah, I painted that up. I have the markings already done there, which I have glued on with some contact adhesive and I have riveted in the claws, so they look really cool. Uh, and the straps I've done quite nicely as well. I've got the Velcro and put them on. So that's one nice and finished up, done. All I've got to do is just finish off the other one. So I've got that there. All that needs doing to that is we're just gonna put the claws onto that and then that is done. I've already put the Velcro in there as well, so that'll go on my left hand, obviously. That is pretty much done. Also, I've been working on the bulb, which is going to go on my back. And to show you what I've done there, I'm just going to angle the camera down a little bit. This is what I have created. A belt, which will go around my waist, my midriff rather, and that will go on my back. So that's what the leaves that I have cut out, I'm about to show you in a minute, that's what they are going to go on to. And then obviously when I've dyed that, that's going to have some Velcro, which that's just going to nice and easily stick around my waist and stay there like that. These are some of the leaves that I've cut out. <clears throat> this is the first one that I've done, which is going to make up the outer of the bulb. Cut the shape there punch some holes into that, which I am going to use to stamp onto the item, onto the belt. And what I've also done, and I'm gonna show you today how I've done, is I've put some like leafy, veiny patterns into that leaf there. So I'm gonna show you how I've done that. And I've also created a couple of other smaller leaves which are going to make up the inside of the bulb and they will essentially just fill in the blanks. There's no need to pattern them. They're just gonna get dyed up the same as the belt and the uh, other leaf that I've got there. So I've already got my leather with me outlines already penciled out or penned out rather. So I'm ready to just basically cut them. So let's get to it, shall we? I'm gonna pop these to one side. Obviously we'll angle the camera down so you can see what I'm doing. <laughs> We're going to get a little rivets that we used last time. Claws in. Two 
Bulbasaur claws. I am really happy with those, how they turned out. Okie dokie. Now that that's done, <clears throat> next step we're going to do is cut out the rest of the leaves and focus on the bulb. And there we have the rest of our leaves. Ready to put patterns on to those ones there and then dye them up using our dye. <clears throat> right, what I'm gonna do is just take a moment now to use the beveler and just round off the edges next part will be to put patterns in them. Right. Okay, so <clears throat> we've tied it up around the edges of the leaves there. Next thing to do is to put a pattern into the leaves. Now to do that, we need to do a couple of things first. I've already, pre already prepped this. 
what you need to do is dampen down the leather so it softens it and that way you can create the nice impression that you want to into the leather. Makes it nice and easier because otherwise you'd have to press really hard into the leather. So that's what I've had the bowl of water here for and just an ordinary household sponge to dampen them up. The vegetable tanned leather soaks up the water, softens that up. You have to let them dry for a little bit, let them return to their natural color, hence why they're a little bit dark uh, in the center at the moment. So I'm gonna pop that water down to one side. And when I did the first one, I used this particular kind of tracing paper that I got from the leather crafting store. And as you can see, I've already created the outline of the veiny leafy pattern that I wanted to for the leaves. So you need that and you obviously and you need one of these as well. A little ballpoint stylus again from the leather crafting store. What you do is you put your leather onto your paws underneath the tracing paper which I'm going to take down onto here. that holds that down, we get one of our leaves, put that underneath, obviously line that up, that's pretty much where I had it before. Zoom in on this a bit so you can see. stylus and go down onto just simply draw with with the stylus going down the outline that you've made and obviously you can make any outline you want when it comes to doing this apply a bit of pressure as you draw going down I'm just gonna do a few lines there See what we're doing. So what that does is, as you can see, creates a nice pattern onto the leather. So when that dries, it gives the nice impression and then obviously that will get dyed up and create a nice looking leaf. So what we're going to do now, since I've got this one and two others to do, I'm going to speed through this.
that's the second one. So we now have two of these done. <coughs> we'll jump past these two. Obviously I'm not gonna bore you to death watching all of these because they do take a while to do, patterning the leather. Just one quick thing I will say, it's always important that you do take down that uh, tracing paper. As you saw, I was continuously lifting up, making sure that I hadn't missed any spots so I could draw the pattern I wanted to. Cool. Next time we come back, I would have finished doing the patterns and then we can carry on and do some dyeing of the leathers. Brilliant. Okay, we have finished putting the patterns into our leaves. One, two, three, plus the fourth one that I did already. They are done. So, next step is we're going to use the water stain, seafoam green, to dye these guys up. So, we need to give this a jolly good shake. Let's sort that out now. that nice and ready and then we need to use a damp household sponge it's just damp not wet so otherwise it would just water down the dye too much one last shake On. Being a dye, we don't want it staining our hands green. Open that. It's always difficult to open these things. <laughs> we apply a generous amount to our sponge and then we work that into the leather. No hesitation, go for it.
Right, I've decided I'm going to leave it there for today. <coughs> So I've pretty much run out of gloves. As you can see, I'm having to put sandwich bags on my hands. <laughs> a little unorthodox, I know, and I have got green fingers, but it washes off. This is not a problem. That's it. One thing I have noticed about the seafoam green is it doesn't tend to be as green as I hoped it would be. Uh, with some of the leaves, I have had to layer it a little bit to try and get it, uh, to try and get the green effect that I was after. But even so, uh, I will probably go over these again at another stage. For the meantime though, I'm going to leave it there since time is getting on and I've pretty much, uh, and as I say, I've run out of gloves and that's my last sponge as well. So, next time I come back to do this will be when we put the thing together, once the leaves are nice and dry and hopefully a bit greener. <laughs> we'll have this sorted, put together, and then hopefully I can show you off the finished piece ready for the Comic-Con. So yeah. For now then YouTube, I shall bid you farewell. Like, comment and subscribe if you've enjoyed this video. Uh, and we'll see you again for part three next time. Cheers and take care. All the best to you. Bye for now.